God's blessings to you as we gather for our weekly reflection on faith, justice, and justice, peace, and community. Through offering these reflections, I pray that the Spirit might stir within, within you a greater desire to come to know the God of love, beauty, mercy, justice, and peace. I pray that this reflection would spiritually feed you, for you, feed you, that you may better honor God's love and faithfulness to you in the ways that you faithfully care for yourself and for others. My friends, this Sunday, we are met with the beautiful story of the prodigal son. The word prodigal refers to the extravagant and reckless ways the young son expands the inheritance he asked his father to give him, even before his father has died. The people of Jesus' time would have been shocked, both at the younger son's selfishness in requesting his inheritance, but also by the father's willingness to give it to him. Some people would criticize the father for being so extravagant in giving the son what he asked for. But as the story goes, the son surrenders everything or squanders everything and realizes the recklessness and selfishness of his ways and decides to come back and beg his father for forgiveness and ask him to employ him as one of his servants. Before we continue with this story, I want to ask us all a question. When we sin, at what point does God forgive us? Many would answer when we express sorrow for what we've done. But that's not the answer. In fact, God immediately forgives us when we have sinned. You see, my brothers and sisters, the very essence of God, who is pure love and mercy, is not to put up obstacles, but to create an immediate pathway for us to get back on track with living life true to the way that God made us. So we shouldn't be surprised when in our story, we find the father watching all the time and waiting for his son to return. And we shouldn't be surprised when we see the father actually running out to greet and embrace his long lost son. This is true extravagant and some would say reckless prodigal love and mercy. The desire in God is that there be no obstacles for us to be fully free to pursue and realize our fullest potential as human beings. So God forgives us immediately and then waits for us to acknowledge our sins, accept his forgiveness, and accept the grace that will help us take a different path in living a better life. The second part of this story regarding the oldest son offers us another lesson, perhaps another way that we sin. As the story unfolds, the oldest son is now angry that his father has accepted the younger son back so easily and even thrown a party for him. But as the father points out to him, he has consistently cared and provided for him, something the oldest son has clearly taken for granted. Perhaps this is a reminder to us all that one of our sins may be our failure to express gratitude for the blessings that God graces us with every day. Our God is a second, third, fourth, and every chance God. That is the very nature of redemptive love. It is the very nature of a prodigal God who gave us everything, including his only begotten son, to prove that all of us, absolutely all, are redeemable. On the behalf of the Catholic Christian family here at St. Agatha, I want to thank you for the many ways that you continue to allow the Lord to work through you, with you, and in you. Please join us for our celebrations this weekend, Sunday at 8 a.m. in person or online, or 10.30 a.m. AM in person. Either in person or online, we welcome your participation in our community prayer of praise and thanksgiving. Please share this video with others on Facebook. It's a great way for you to participate in evangelization in spreading the good news of Jesus Christ. Thank you for all the ways that you allow the Lord to work through you, with you, and in you. And in all things, my friends, be blessed.